So what did we talk about last time we were together? We had a one hour lecture on Wednesday in Rex Vowles. Uh, we finished off talking about thermodynamic property tables. I should just mention something because I didn't mention it and I'll trip you up. Um, we formally introduced quality and then we did some interpolation stuff. That was all reinforced by problem solving session three. So, um, you know, like when we do an exam, I'm not going to test you on multiplication because I just assume you can do it. Interpolation is one of those things that you just need to get right. You need to get it 100% right every time and do it quickly um, because I won't mark you on it, but you'll need it in order to find the solution to the problems. Actually, quiz one might have some just real interpolation stuff. So quiz one might, <clears throat> I haven't written it yet, that's this afternoon's job, um, might just do interpolate this, but it's much more likely to be, here's a process, interpolation is required at both ends, and you need to do the interpolation right to get it right. Um, so just a little thing about that. There was something I didn't mention for property tables that I should have and will now do. Two things, one is, um, I can reproduce up to 10% of a textbook or, um, or one chapter, whichever is greater for educational purposes. So in week three lecture, I've got a section, a page called uh, tables for reference. And if we go there, I've reproduced uh, the water tables from Reisel and also refrigerant R12 and refrigerant 134A from Rogers and Mayhew which I think are the tables that you are most required to use. I think uh, some of the questions also mention ammonia um, for Rogers and Mayhew, but that's, that's there. I just wanted to make a comment about um, saturation values at low values of compression, because, which I should have mentioned last week, um, sorry about that. So, the question would arise, what's the, God bless you, What's the properties of compressed liquid water at atmospheric pressure, so like current atmospheric pressure, at, for example, 45 degrees? So say we had, so we've got a temperature of 45 degrees where the, the saturation pressure then, so the pressure required to make it boil is, call it 10 kilopascals, all right? We're not at 10 kilopascals, we're at atmospheric pressure, okay? All we've got, and the question is, you've got a whole bunch of properties along here, blah, blah, blah. All you've got, atmospheric pressure, which is there. So here we've faithfully represented the pressure that we're at. Here we've faithfully represented the temperature that we're at. And so should we use these values? Or should we use those values? Not an uncommon question, and one that I didn't discuss um, and should have talked about. We shouldn't use 45 degrees, we should use 40, sorry. Because when I, let's use 40. That way there's no interpolation. Cool. So should we use those values, should we use those values? And indeed we've got fluid values and, or liquid values and vapor values, as we know, okay? And the, the answer is that we use the values defined by the temperature rather than the values defined by the pressure. And the reason for that is that in the liquid form, these values are much more sensitive to changes in temperature than they are to changes in pressure, okay? And so just to evidence that, say we were interested in the enthalpy, that's pretty common, we're interested in the enthalpy, Right. Say we've got the enthalpy at 7.3 kilopascals, so this is quite rarefied, and 40 degrees C is 167.5. Can someone remember 167? Good. Let's go down to the compressed liquid tables. Compressed liquid tables. All right. If we compressed it all the way to 5 megapascals, so we've gone from 7 kilopascals to 5 megapascals, we've had a massive change of pressure, Okay, but at the same temperature, the enthalpy is 170. All right, so what was that? That's five in 100. So it's gone up about, oh, it's 550. So it's gone up about 4%, okay? By 
going through a pressure change of a factor of a few thousand, okay? But, right, so, so small percentage change, small error um, for a large pressure difference. But if we looked at the temperature values, let's go up here, all right? You can see that at 100 degrees, it's going to, enthalpy was what we we're tracking, it's going to 420. Okay, so the temperature value is um, much less representative. Okay, the true value will be somewhere between 167 and a half and 172, and you can interpolate that. At one atmosphere, it'll be 168, you know, whatever. It'll, um, but it won't be materially different from that value. So that's why. So um, this is one of those, you pick the value that's closest. So rather than interpolating, you just pick the value that works. Um, that works up to, I would use that up to two and a half megapascals of pressure, right? By the time something was at four megapascals of pressure, maybe you want to interpolate between this pressure and the five megapascal, because that's your first data point. You say, all right, well, it's 80% of the way towards that value. Now it's not 167, now it is 170 and a half. You know, so maybe you want to start interpolating then. Um, so just a comment on compressed liquid that's at low values of compression, one atmosphere, two atmospheres, three atmospheres, um, use the saturation values for the liquid side. There you go. How do you interpolate when you get to superheated fluids when you have like a pressure and a temperature and then another different pressure and a different temperature and you're trying to find like an interpolation? Good. All right, good, good. There was a question about interpolating superheated tables. Let's find something that's reasonable. Uh, and the question was, it's about two-dimensional interpolation. Uh, that'll do. Cool. All right, so can I, can I put some numbers on your question to try and rephrase it? So say, for example, you had a pressure of 4.2 MPa and you had a uh, temperature of, so let's call it pressure equals, and a temperature of, so let's say 425 degrees C, okay? So 425 isn't here, and 4.2 is neither four nor, nor four and a half. That's your question. So how do you interpolate on a superheated steam table when you've got a pressure and a temperature and neither of them are in the, ta in the thing? Uh, let's say you want to find enthalpy, just so we've got one, one value that we're focusing on. And the enthalpy row is this row. In the book, there's no headings on the second page. It opens up to a two to a page and there's no headings. Okay, good. So this is the values that we want because this is enthalpy H. Cool. So the answer is you need to interpolate what ends up being three times. And that's okay, it's just a, it's just a process. And I will, when I'm defining problems, try and avoid that because no one likes spending hours doing this. Um, so the first thing you do, uh, and what have you got? So you need that one and you need this one. Cool. The first thing you do is you've got a H for 400 degrees C and a H for 450 degrees C. You create a new point, which is H at 425 degrees C at four megapascals. And I pick 425 because it's midway between. What's 215, what's the average of 215 and 330? It feels like about 285, right? So we'll get something that's 3285. I made that up. You should use a calculator, right? 3285. Then you need a value within the 4.5 megapascal range for 425, which is the average of those two numbers, average of 205 and so that'd be 200 and 320, 60 is the difference. So that would be 3265 nominally, right? And so now you've got H at 425 degrees C at 4.5 MPa, okay? So now you've got a value for that. Let's use a different color. Red's getting to me. Okay, good. Green's more positive. You've got a value for that. You've got a value for that. They're down here. 
and now you interpolate between those two values. So this is at 4.0 megapascals. This is at 4.5 megapascals. What you want is something that's 4.2 megapascals, which is 20% of the way, no, 40% of the way, because it's only half. 40% of the way between that and that. And look at that, there's only 20 the difference. 40% of 20 is eight. So it will be th three, two, seven, seven, or something similar. Yeah, good, excellent. Um, good question, glad you asked. I'd kind of briefly mentioned two-dimensional interpolation, but I don't think we did an example of it. Um, and the application of it to superheat was a good question.